I suspect this one's going to go a little bit tougher for us than the past uh, last video. This is problem number 20 on page 282 in the book. Y double prime plus Y prime plus Y equals to 3X squared e to the X. Um, I had solve written in pencil there. It must have come up in a previous class where we had some problems with this and I uh, had to go home and work it out. So uh, let's give this a shot. So we have, um, let's, let's go ahead and cut to the chase here. We have Y particular is 1 over d squared plus d plus 1 operating on 3x squared e to the x. And the exponential shift theorem says that, uh, well it doesn't say we can factor 3 out, but we know that because it's a constant. I'll factor the 3 out. And my uh, shift will be in replacing these d's with d plus 1. So d plus 1 squared is d plus whatever that coefficient of x is. So d plus 1 squared plus d plus 1 plus 1. And this will end up operating on x squared. Okay, so here's the 1 over polynomial operator times um, evaluated d plus a, d plus 1. Now, I forgot something pretty important here. The e to the x also factors out, so I need to erase this and write 3 e to the x. Okay, so that's the exponential shift theorem for uh, inverse operators. And um, let me think here. So we have 3 e to the x. And down below, I've got, let's see, d squared plus 2d plus 1 plus d plus 1 plus 1. So this ends up being 1 over d squared plus 3d plus 3, operating on x squared. And uh, now I see why that's going to be a mess, because uh, this is one of these operators, one of these uh, polynomials that does not, does not factor. So uh, let me, um, I'm going to shut the camera off for a minute and see if I can think of a quick way to do this. Well, fortified with lunch, I worked through this problem, and boy, is it a doozy. And uh, let's look at it. Now, I, I took my Y particular and rewrote it up here. So I'm going to give you some of my best stuff on this problem. Um, so the, the, the big issue is that we can't factor easily d squared plus 3d plus 3. Now, I alluded to a, a similar type of problem in another video and uh, decided that... Um, method of undetermined coefficients would be much quicker. And it would be much quicker in this problem also. But I thought, let's try it. Let's see if we can work on these big monster ones. And uh, so, and this gives me a chance to give you some of my best stuff. So here's, a, here's the issue. I want to figure out how to factor this using, you know, complex numbers, irrational numbers. So if you had uh, d squared plus 3d plus 3 equals to 0, we can, we can solve that using the quadratic formula. d would be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all divided by 2 times 1. And underneath here we have 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So we end up with a complex number negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 times i over 2. All right, so the, um, the first root of the problem, I'm going to call it r1. So let me, let me block this off here. Root 1 is going to be negative 3 plus the square root of 3 times i over 2. And the second root it's going to be negative 3 minus the square root of 3 times i over 2. All right, well, um, which means that this problem looks like this. See, I'm trying to avoid a lot of writing. I'll, I'll, I'll put those in later when we need it. So y in particular is 3e to the x. And this is 1 over 
d minus the first root times d minus the second root, all operating on x squared. So I rewrote this polynomial as d minus root 1, d minus root 2. And now I want to do a, a partial fraction expansion on this. So 1 over d minus root 1, d minus root 2, is a over d minus root 1 plus b over d minus root 2. And if I clear the fractions, multiply by this term, all the fractions disappear. 1 equals to a, parentheses, d minus root 2, plus b, parentheses, d minus root 1. And now if we let d equal to root 2, this is 0, so 1 equals to b times root 2 minus root 1, which means that b, and I'm going to block this off also, we'll need this, b would equal to 1 divided by root 2 minus root 1. And then if um, d was equal to root 1 in this equation, this cancels. I have a, 1 equals to a times um, root 1 minus root 2. So that means that a is equal to 1 over root 1 minus root 2. Well, as you can see, a and b are opposite signs here. And so um, that's, that's going to be convenient for us. So let's, let's split this up. And make sure I'm not risking anything critical here. <clears throat> okay. Um, so y in particular is 3e to the x. And our operator is going to be 1 over um, r1 minus r2 times d minus r1. I'm going to center this one up here. And then plus uh, 1 over r2 minus r1, d minus r2, all in parentheses. And all this operates on x squared. Now then, um, let's factor out r1 minus r2. And here it's a negative. So this comes out as a, as a negative of that. So that means y particular would be 3e e to the x oops, over, let me get this right here, 3e e to the x over uh, r1 minus r2 bracket. Okay, so I have 1 over um, d minus r1 plus, actually it's a negative now, uh, minus 1 over d minus r2. It's, it's negative because we factor this out as the negative of r1 minus r2. And then operates on x squared. Well, this is going to allow me to work out the infinite series expansion, but we only need to go up to d squared because my q of x is a second degree polynomial. So, I'm going to erase this and then do these expansions. Before doing the infinite series expansion I need to massage these a little bit. So I took out R1 and I reversed these terms. So I have minus 1 over R1 parentheses 1 minus D over R1. And you can verify that this fraction is equivalent to this fraction. And the similar reason over here I factored out R2 and um, and, and reversed the signs, so made that a plus 1 again. And then um, we had r2 parentheses 1 minus d over r2. All right, so again, you can multiply all that back and verify that, that it works out the way it's supposed to. All right, well, um, so now we have <laughs> um, these things. Now, I wonder if, um, I'm thinking here, could we, could we make life a little easier for ourselves and... Uh, um, 
No, I'm going to keep these the way they are for now. So let's let's keep all the symbols in there. But now we're going to do the expansion on 1 over 1 minus d over r1. I took um, each of these and expanded. So I had the minus 1 over r1 goes to here. And then 1 over 1 minus d over r1. That infinite series expansion that starts off with 1 plus d over r1 plus d squared over r1 squared. You know, it's a power series using d over r1, positive term power series. And again, I'm only going to the second derivative because our polynomial is second degree. So third derivative would be 0. Likewise, over here, I took out 1 over, 1 over r2 parentheses, 1 plus d over r2 plus d squared over r2 squared. All right, better fix that. OK, so um, what do we have here? Now, um, let's see what, um, what we can do with this. And I'm, I'm kind of stalling the moment where I plug those numbers back in, because it's, you know, if that looks messy, wait till you plug those, those complex numbers in up there. All right, so y particular is 3e e to the x over r1 minus r2. And we have, in the constant term, we have um, 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1. So it's this term, 1 over r2, and then negative or minus 1 over r1. And that's the, the constant term. Now for d, we have um, 1 over r2 squared, and then minus 1 over r1 squared times d. And then for d squared, we have uh, 1 over r2 cubed, and then minus 1 over r2 cubed, r1 cubed, sorry, 1 over r1 cubed, d squared, and all that operates on x squared. I hope that shows up on the screen there. All right, so I, um, I, I split this up into the powers of d. And, uh, eh, what a mess. Um, let's see, I think we could possibly do some simplifying here. So I'm going to do some erasing and try to simplify this. I took this bottom equation and uh, combined these fractions. So it's r1 minus r2 over r1 times r2. r1 squared minus r2 squared over this product. And r1 cubed minus r2 cubed over this product times d squared. Um, all times x squared. So if you look carefully there, you'll see that uh, it's right. Okay, <laughs> looks right to me. Now, um, by the way, I didn't, I, I, I sort of worked this on paper and I didn't do it this way. So I'm kind of, um, kind of winging it here, working with these symbols. And I think it's, it's going to be uh, a little cleaner than what I did on paper. Um, so uh, I did it this way because the difference of two squares, r1 minus r2 factors out. And the difference of cubes, r1 minus r2, again factors out. So it's going to allow us to do some, some simplifying here before I plug that stuff in. So we have um, y particular, 3e to the x over parentheses r1 minus r2. And now let's... Um, We'll do some factoring here. First of all, this is still r1 minus r2 over r1 r2. And this one is going to factor as r1 minus r2 times r1 plus r2 over r1 squared r2 squared times d plus. This is a not so easy to factor. I've taught factoring difference of cubes before, so I kind of know it off the top of my head. I know that r1 minus r2 is a factor. The remaining factor is r1 squared plus r1 r2 plus r2 squared over r2 
R1 cubed, R2 cubed. And we have a d squared in there, and then it's all times x squared. So I didn't quite fit this part over here, but it's there. The main thing is I, I factored an R1 minus R2 out of each of these. And this difference in cubes, you can verify that uh, this is going to be R1 minus R2 factored out. And then uh, R1 squared plus R1 R2 plus R2 squared. That, uh, that works out. So, um, which is nice because at least we can, we can do some, some cancellation here. R1 minus R2 cancels across the board. And so now we have something that looks uh, simpler. And from here, I'm going to also, uh, now I'll leave it like this. So let me see, y particular would be 3e to the x. And then we have a bracket, 1 over r1, r2 plus r1 plus r2 over r1 squared, r2 squared times d. And then plus r1 squared plus r1 r2 plus r2 squared over r1 cubed r2 cubed times d squared all operating on x squared. All right, um, I'm thinking I've probably got about as far as I can go with the symbols for these two complex numbers. So now we have to uh, face the music and plug those in. I think I'm going to find out what R1 times R2 is first of all. So I'm going to leave this here, erase this. I'm going to start working on these symbols. I kept this intact and um, I'm first going to figure out what's R1 times R2. So I need to multiply these two complex numbers together. And my denominator is going to be 4, but the numerator is going to be 9. And then plus 3 square roots of 3i, and then minus 3 square roots of 3i, and then minus, minus square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3, and then i squared, and the denominators are set as 4. So uh, these two terms canceled, and minus 3i squared is the same as plus 3. So I have 9 plus 3 is 12, over 4 is equal to 3. Wow, isn't that nice? <laughs> okay, so I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with that result. That means we uh, these denominators will be easy, won't they? They'll be easy to work with. So let's rewrite uh, y particular, and I guess I'll write it right here. So y particular will be 3e e to the x bracket, one-third, plus r1 plus r2 over 3 squared, or 9, because this is r1, r2 quantity squares, it's just be 3 squared or 9, uh, times d. And then we have um, r2 squared plus r1, r2 plus r2 squared, and this should be r1 squared, not r2 over 27, 3 cubed, d squared, and all this operates on x squared. So there's y particular. And uh, I'm going to erase this and um, just spread that 3 through there so it will clean up just a little bit more. That gives me a y particular of um, e to the x because the 3 uh, multiplies through here, cancels that 3, so I'm left with 1 plus and then r1 plus r2 over 3 times d. And then this expression, the 3 cancels, leaving a 9, times d squared, and then that whole bracket operates on x squared. All right, well, it's, it's, to me, it's worked looking a lot better. And uh, let's, uh, let me do some erasing. We need to figure out um, these ingredients here. And recall that r1, r2 was equal to 3. Very handy. And then, um, what is R1 plus R2? Well, 
I can probably do this mentally, if we add these together, the complex part cancels off. And I get uh, negative 3 halves plus a negative, another negative 3 halves. Well, that's going to be minus 3. Minus 3. Okay. And, um, and then we have this ingredient. We need R1 squared and R2 squared. Okay. Um, well, let me see. Can we do something really slick here? Remember that the equation we solved was this one. I want to make, make sure I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. And I know that r1 squared plus 3r1 plus 3 is equal to 0. And so r1 squared, because this being a root of the equation, it causes this to equal to 0 when you plug it in. And so r1 squared would equal to negative 3r1 minus 3. And so um, I'm kind of doing this a slick way. We could just simply square that out. But I thought, well, this is kind of cool. r1 squared then would be um, negative 3 times r1 plus 1. And so uh, by factor out the negative 3, so r1 squared will be negative 3 times 1 plus r1. Well, if I add 1 to this, I'm adding 2 halves. And so, um, you know, it's r1 plus 1 will be uh, minus 3 halves plus square root of 3 i over 2 plus 2 halves. And so I end up with a minus 1 half. Uh, so I have a minus 1 plus the square root of 3i over 2. There we go. And um, now presumably if we square it, let's just, just for the practice, let's go ahead and square it. And also to sort of check myself, although I'm pretty confident here. If I did square this out, will we get this? Alright, well, let's see, we get 9 minus 3 square roots of 3i. Minus, oh, that's minus 6, square root of 3i. There we go. And then uh, this will be 3 times i squared, that's minus 3, all over 4. So we end up with 6 minus 6 square root of 3i over 4. Um, we can divide by 2, factor 3 out, 3 comes out. Divide by 2, I have 1 minus uh, square root of 3i over and that's not right, is it? Uh, did I try to go, try to do too much in one swoop here? No, nope, it's correct. Because if you, uh, here I factor out a minus 3. So this is positive 3 halves, that's positive 3 halves, and then minus 3 square roots of 3 over 2. Okay, that is correct. All right, so my, uh, my little slick way of doing it worked out okay. Uh, well, let's, let's try that for R2 squared. Erase the clutter. So, R2 squared plus 3R2 plus 3 also equals to 0, which means that R2 squared is also minus 3R2 minus 3, which is minus 3 parentheses R2 plus 1. And so R2 squared is basically the same thing. Uh, Except, let's make that R2. My R2 is different from R1, so I, I should get a little bit of a different answer. All right, so I have this minus 3, parentheses. If I take R2 and add 1, um, I, I'm adding 2 halves. 2 cancels with negative 3, leaving negative 1. So I end up with minus 1 minus the square root of 3 times i over 2. There we go. So, um, those I think are all the key ingredients for simplifying that expression down there. So, I'll, uh, I'll do some erasing and then we'll plug them in. Okay, I'm just going to work this live on camera here. So, I have y particular is e to the x. We have 1. And then r1 plus r2 is negative 3. So, this is minus 3 over 3 times d. And then we have plus 
Okay, well, we have uh, R1 squared is negative 3 parentheses minus 1 plus the square root of 3 i over 2. That was R1 squared. R1 times R2 is 3 plus 3. And then R2 squared is a negative 3 minus 3 parentheses negative 1 minus the square root of 3 i over 2. And all this is divided by 9. And this is times d squared. Everything's operating on x squared. So again, I kind of ran, ran out of room here, but the d squared and the x squared are all over there. So um, let's see, what else can we do here? Well, uh, let's see. This is easy. This is 1 minus d. So let's uh, start writing out y particular. So we have y particular is e to the x, 1 minus d. And then we have to deal with this. Now, um, we could probably do some simplifying here. I'm thinking those uh, imaginary numbers better cancel off. And so we have negative 3 square root of 3i over 2. And here I have positive, the two negatives cancel, positive 3 square root of i over 2. So the good news is that the imaginary terms cancel, leaving something rather, rather benign. And uh, so let's see, this is plus, and I'm going to make a big parenthesis. This would be positive 3 halves plus 3, and then another positive 3 halves. And this is times d squared, and everything operates on x squared. So we're almost there. Um, 3 halves plus 3 halves is 3, another 3 is, makes 6, so this is. 6d squared. So um, I'll do some erasing and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. I just noticed something. I uh, forgot that this is all divided by 9. So really this is going to be 6 over 9 or 2 thirds. So that means y particular is e to the x uh, parentheses 1 minus d and then 6 ninths is 2 thirds plus two-thirds d squared, operating on x squared. So all that mess for this, okay, was it worth it? Well, um, in a practical sense, absolutely not. You would use method of undetermined coefficients rather than this operator method. You know, never do an operator method on a um, polynomial that doesn't factor well, okay? It's just to be a mess. But I wanted you to see that it still works. And also gave me a chance to show you some, um, some really nice um, algebraic techniques for these uh, exhaustive problems. And uh, some little tricks of the trade. So I hope it's, uh, if you've uh, sat through all this video, I hope it's, well, obviously you have if you're still watching it, right? Um, then I hope it's been, been well worth it. All right, well, I'm kind of crossing my fingers here, hoping that this is going to work. So y particular will be e to the x, and we have 1 times x squared minus the first derivative, minus 2x. The second derivative is just 2, so that's plus 4 thirds. And let's see, let's factor out a, a 1 third, and then we'll go look in the book and see what happened. All right, so y particular would be e to the x over 3 times, if I factor a 3 out, it's like multiplying by 3, 3x three squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay, so um, I think I left my book in the other room, so hang on. Problem 20. Y particular is one third e to the x parentheses three x squared minus six x plus four. Ah, well, that's a good feeling, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so there we there we have it. Um, well, let's go and work a uh, hopefully a little easier problem than this one.